So we'll get to the question of Chinese weapons uh, to uh, Russia in the Ukraine war in a minute. I want to ask you about the baseline hot button issue in the U.S.-China relationship, and that's Taiwan. There have been reports for several years now that China is planning for a resolution of the Taiwan issue from its standpoint, meaning presumably an invasion earlier than the U.S. might have thought, perhaps in the next year or two. You've seen statements by people uh, in the military to that effect. I ask you directly, uh, as the person who oversaw our China policy during the Trump administration, do you believe that she is speeding up his timetable uh, for uh, mm -hmm. taking Taiwan and has decided to resolve that issue once and for all while he's president? Yeah, I, I suspect that he uh, is going to make this his legacy um, uh, uh, achievement. Uh, he he is he is determined on his watch, I believe, uh, to try to resolve, as you put it, and as he puts it, the the Taiwan question. Um, I don't know what that means in terms of timing. I mean, he's a seventy year old uh, dictator who's just inaugurated his uh, another five year term without having identified a potential successor, which means he's probably on track planning for uh, another ten years in power. Uh, we've seen him take a number of steps that I haven't gotten a lot of attention yet, basically um, uh, preparing the society for war, uh, passing new laws that are designed to mobilize the society, build out the reserve capacity. He's building combat uh, field hospitals uh, across Fujian province right now, right across from uh, uh, Beijing. He's building um, uh, air raid shelters right now. Uh, you know, it, it, it's reminiscent of the, of the 1950s. Uh, the, with the Korean War uh, and, and then with the Sino-Soviet split when he mobilized, Mao Zedong mobilized the society to start uh, digging tunnels and moving uh, a lot of their manufacturing in, in, into the, you know, the underbelly of mountains and things like that. This is happening right now. We're, we're, we're seeing very strident language uh, in some of the, uh, authentic, the, the more authoritative publications like Qiu Shi, uh, Seeking Truth magazine, the Communist Party theoretical journal, there, there was just a, a, a very uh, uh, troubling piece on Xi Jinping's, Xi Jinping thought on, on militarization. Uh, so I, I think that if we look at what he's saying, if we look at what he's now doing, uh, I, I think that it, it would be uh, the prudent thing for us to do would be to uh, uh, assume that he is moving toward uh, uh, forcing a, uh, an end game. Uh, to this situation. And so it's it's incumbent upon the democracies of the world uh, to enhance our, our military capabilities rapidly and those of Taiwan in order to try to deter a conflict. Again, we everything that I've seen the Biden administration talk about and, and the Trump administration before that and other administrations before that are about preserving the status quo in the Taiwan Strait, not about challenging the status quo. But again, Xi Jinping is the protagonist in the story. He's trying to actively change the status quo from one of a stable uh, modus vivendi where Taiwan uh, does not have uh, de jure independence and where uh, countries around the world recognize uh, their, their own one China policies. She wants to move towards an active annexation of Taiwan. So again, he is the protagonist changing the status quo here.